The season of the Splicer trailer came out today and there's a lot to like, and I want to focus on the three new leg exotics that are coming with it. They really interest me. They look like they have a lot of worth. And also I want to talk at the end my thoughts on what was shown with the sidearm and things like that. First, I do want to take a look at the Titan's Path of Burning Steps. Converts solar eliminations into increased weapon damage and then makes them more difficult to lock down with stasis. I've always thought that solar should automatically counter stasis. This has sort of a Nezrak Sin feel to it, a battle harmony feel to it, using a solar weapon, or a solar ability. So Igneous Hammer, Devil's Ruin, The Toaster, Terabah, Tiku, Stars and Shadows, Sunshot, Merciless, Ariana's Vow, Borealis, Duality, Tommy's, Lord of Wolves, Aya Tomorrow, so many of them. Each playstyle has a good weapon or two. That damage after getting a solar elimination, I would assume is going to match that of Battle Harmony. We don't know. It could be more, it could be less. Battle Harmony gives 20% more. It could have a timer like Battle Harmony as well. It just says damage buff, but we don't know if that's for all weapons or just the solar weapon that you used. It makes me think it's just all around weapon damage, solar or kinetic, because it just says solar eliminations. If it's that way, think about Sturm and Drain. Drain is solar, get the Drain kill, switch to Sturm, and it should be a one shot in theory. And here's some more things that I'm thinking. I really hope that the damage stacks with bottom tree sunspots, because the sunspots give that damage buff. You get a kill with a solar ability for health regen. Like, it could be a problem. It could be really good. Bottom tree sunspots really slept on. Or think top tree with hammer strike, the shoulder charge. Say you have a swashbuckler weapon. You shoulder charge, get that times five, then the burning steps buff. There's a lot to test out. And not only for PvP, all of this in PvE as well. Like, Tikus could be amazing. Now, the second part of this exotic perk, like, wow, with how it's worded, you have to get solar eliminations. But it states you're going to be more difficult to lock down with stasis. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. Well, well, two things. One, whatever this perk is, I feel like should just be universal. But if this perk is as good as it looks on paper, the solar titan should see some play. Like, imagine getting an igneous hammer elimination. You have that timer on your screen, and then someone cold snaps you, or throws a freeze. And it doesn't do what it normally does. I'm in. I'm all in with that. The exotic sounds incredible. I really want to see what it does in PvE and PvP. For the Warlock, Boots of the Assembler. Again, very interesting for PvE and PvP. Condenses a Warlock's Rift's healing and empowering energy into projectiles that seek out their allies to bless them with noble benefits. So keyword, noble benefits. Noble rounds, like Lumina. The noble round state, using a noble round on an ally, heals them and grants both you and them a weapon damage buff for a short duration. It could be very interesting, but nothing about the perk states that you get the effects yourself, but it really does sound like you're spending your rift animation to send out noble rounds to your allies. And you could mod everything for your rift, have high recovery, and you can play to that rift. Maybe before a fight, you can get your allies close together, pop that rift. Maybe they're running a high impact sniper, and that damage is enough to one shot body. Maybe a one shot bow. Or maybe you have on Lumina to give these buffs out even more. Watch out for this one. This one could be really interesting. We need to see what that damage number is because if it is high enough for, again, the one-shot frozen orbit body shots from your allies, we could see this in trials for sure. Two taps for 120s. It's definitely a pre-fight strategy. Now, the healing part is just going to happen. You're going to throw it, it's going to send it out, and it's going to heal somebody. But it's basically a portable, empowering, and healing rift for allies. There are subclasses like Bottom Tree Arc, where the rift charges faster when you're near allies. Mods like Distribution. There's Dark Matter on Middle Tree Void. Middle Tree Dawn is perfect. I'm not too sure it's going to hold in PvE, but again, we just don't know what all it does. I do see PvP potential though. We need to see how all the interactions work, but especially as a starting strategy. Pop that rift, send those noble rounds to give a weapon damage bonus to your allies. That could be huge in Trials of Osiris. Next, the Hunter's Star Eater Scales. Allows hunters to feast upon orbs of power, charging their super more quickly and making it more potent. This is another one that can work in both PvE and PvP, another battle harmony feel. Masterworked weapons, allies drop orbs. They're saying that you get more super energy from those orbs, so you take into account like Bottom Tree, Gunslinger's ability to get a faster super. And I really wonder what a Crest Titan bubble that drops four orbs would do for a hunter that has this chest piece on. The second part is more super damage. Now PvP, you're using it for a faster super. PvE, it's for the faster super and more super damage you automatically think of Bottom Tree Golden Gun. And hey, in the Crucible, that buff might be enough to allow you to one-shot body supers with Bottom Tree Golden Gun. But honestly, what comes to mind for PvE is Bottom Tree Tether, really. But I think top three 
and could be the best is going to be Spectral Blades, because remember, they have Shattering Strike, it's a debuff. After performing a Flawless Execution, your melee attack weakens enemies. And I've always felt that Spectral Blades in PvE is severely underutilized, it's underrated, and we all know that Tether's great, especially with the rigs, the Tether's great. But you can debuff Majors, Ultras, Bosses almost at will. You get a Flawless Execution headshot, you're invisible and you're safe to go in. But with these legs, your super does more damage. So you get your super, get a crouching headshot, the invisibility allows you to get inside on those bosses, ultras, you melee for the debuff, and your spectra blades are doing more damage on top because of the legs. So in the scenario, you debuff that enemy for your team. They're laying into them with rockets, swords, supers. Meanwhile, you have more damage on top of the already debuffed enemy. Seriously, watch out for this one. I plan to cover it once I get the exotic. They say there's over 30 new or reprised legendary weapons with this season. They say you can find the perfect weapon, the perfect role, bring it into the endless night so 30 you have to think there's gonna be weapons with this activity there's the vault of glass weapons I'm excited and as far as the trailer it looks great like some of these pictures like Bungie please make a PvP map out of the some of this stuff it looks awesome the Vex stuff has like a Blade Runner feel to it a Tron feel the six-man activity is needed I loved Menagerie I loved Sundial it's one of those things that we know that loot's gonna be tied to it I can't tell you how many times I ran for Ostringer or Breach Light if there's a weapon or two in there and it's a fun activity Activity, I'm all in. I'll grind for it. It's like all I could ask for. It looks promising though. And they're keeping the theme of telling a story, which is good. I can't wait to see what they have in store for us all. There's also a look at the season pass sidearm. I don't know if it's elemental, if it's kinetic, but guys, you get kills and then you load in a freezing shot. Now the question now is going to be, when you freeze something and you have on stasis, do you get the benefits like hedrons or fissures from an exploded enemy? That's a can of worms, but if it does, straight up top tier for PvE and PvP. Using a sniper with this sidearm, you can get a couple kills, freeze an enemy. If it does give hedrons, you can switch to the sniper. It is 197 to the body because of hedrons. Like it could be crazy. My favorite part, like this entire aesthetic, like I love that Vex stuff. So we have this cool look. We have a six player match made activity and it looks like missions maybe like they say there's a weekly pinnacle expunge mission to go along with the narrative we have three really cool leg pieces that i talked about in the early part of the video we have a stasis sidearm 30 weapons to add back into rotation some new some old and oh yeah we like we have vault of glass it looks like a good season to me and of course we need to see how the activity plays but like i said if there's a meta weapon in there i'm in no matter what i'm gonna grind for it and the best part is that if no friends are on, I can just go in with five other random people. And all of you out there that don't have a regular fire team, this is a good thing. You can get in there. This is the type of destiny I like. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. And if you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. You can use the link down below and my code COOL at checkout for a discount. I think all this looks pretty cool. Like, I love the look and feel of this so far. And I'm really excited about the leg pieces. Like, let's let's talk about some pairings and how you think that they're going to perform. I'm ready for another six-man activity, like I said. Sound like they're adding a lot of weapons, and I'm excited to get back into the Vault of Glass. Let's talk about it down below. What are your first initial thoughts of the trailer? Some things that you like, some things that you're kind of unsure of? Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.